Hi everybody, thank you for coming to watch our presentation today. My name is Mark LeBain and this is Mark Melikin and we're from Lingnan University. And we're the primary investigators for MILI, which was discipline-based uh, lectures for English enhancement. Mark will come back a little bit later to talk about our pilot analysis and uh, give you some student perspectives on these MILI videos. But I'm going to take you through the concept and really what MILI is all about and how it can benefit you in any discipline-based course at any university. So first of all, what is MILI and how did we come up with it? Well, MILI is a little bit different than, let's say, uh, flipping a classroom. In flipping a classroom, uh, lecturers will give students some materials to read so when they come to class, they're better prepared to contribute and they don't have to spend that class time dealing with that content. Uh, how MILI differs is we really look at developing and introducing key concepts and terminology to students to help bridge their understanding. So because students have a variety of different upbringings uh, here, in, here in Hong Kong, the, we have Chinese medium schools, we have English medium of schools, and also we have science-based schools, and every student comes with a different level of course exposure, English ability, and what we want to do is make sure that we can bridge that understanding so all students entering these core courses have the same foundation. And that is a big issue here. Because in order to graduate Lingnan University, and most other universities have these core courses, and two of ours are called the Process of Science and the Making of Hong Kong. And what that means is all, all students have to complete these in order to graduate. So because they're forced to take it, they come from different disciplines and different backgrounds, so we wanted to develop these mini lectures to give them that basic foundation so they could excel in their classes. Now, how is it different? Well, normally uh, a language professional like myself, I might design uh, a lecture on English content, whereas a discipline-based instructor might uh, create a, a little lecture introducing some of the key terminology or, for example, some content. So let's, let's say basic law or globalization or Gini coefficient, for example. But what we do is we look at it from a different perspective. We take this top-down, bottom-up approach because in a sense it's just not us, the educators, it's also the learners that we have to gather their perspective to make sure that we are designing and developing materials that have some value to them. So let's go through this 10-stage development process. So to ensure that everything is done properly, we have to first have our language team. And our language team consists of not only language professionals, but a range of student helpers. Now these student helpers come from different abilities, different backgrounds, and they range from tutors to fourth year senior students to even freshmen. So for stage one, what we do is we want to meet with the course developers, the course lecturers, the discipline-based teachers, to see what their perspective of the course is, what they feel students have to learn and take away, and any perceived difficulties they think students might have with the material. Then we go away, and stage two is the language team will review these course materials independently. That means we won't give them to any students that have had any exposure to the courses that we are creating for, so we can get this independent view. Then we're going to embed a student into the course, or we hire a student that has just completed the course to give us their perspective on what is happening in the classroom. So how is each course lecture teaching the course? What are some of the difficulties students have in the classroom? And also, what are some of the difficulties students have with the materials? Once this bottom-up is done, then we meet together. And at stage three, the language team meets and we come up with a storyboard of ideas for development. We see what kind of terminology we need to develop, what kind of skills, whether they be language or introducing even theory to the students, because maybe they just don't have the enough uh, 
enough foundation in order to understand what's being taught in the classroom. Then we take these storyboards and we meet with the course developers to get their approval, to get some comments, and maybe make some tweaks and changes to it. Finally, of course, with all our changes in hand, we create authentic scripts. Now these scripts are going to be uh, designed not only by the language lecturers, but also by our student helpers. We want to make sure that the terminology we're using can actually be understood by the students themselves. And finally, we create a range of comprehension questions. Now this is very important because at the end of watching each Millie lecture, students will do about 10 questions, maybe multiple choice, true, false. And this can give the course lecturer an understanding or an idea if the students are actually understanding the course content or if there's still some areas where they might be having some difficulty understanding and they can address that when they get into the class. Once scripts are done, comprehension questions are done, then we start video production. These are done professionally. We use not real life actors, we use real life people lecturers, tutors, and students. We want to make them as authentic as possible. Once the shooting is done, we go into the editing process where we add music to enhance the overall effect, and we put them in a coherent type of presentation platform so they follow a linear line. Next, we will do beta testing. Now, because of all the different types of turmoil that have been happening here in Hong Kong, we only had an opportunity to not really beta test, but just pilot test both courses this last year. Now, based on some of the feedback we received, uh, you know, beta testing allows us to make some changes to some videos that might have some problems. And we've also had recommendations to create a couple extra ones for some, uh, for some content that wasn't covered originally. Finally, stage nine, after these modifications are done, then we go through another testing. And then finally, the finished product is published either on a variety of different outputs, which could be Blackboard, Moodle. We used EDX, uh, a KEEP program here that's run by Chinese University in Hong Kong that runs on the EDX platform or embedded them in Moodle for our students to use. Now, that's the process. That's the rationale behind developing these mini lectures. Now, I'm gonna bring up Mark, and he's gonna talk about, you know, some of the analysis, the student feedback, et cetera. Thanks, Mark. So, I'm going to talk about our final output. And to do that, I'm first going to look at our total production. Now, as you can see up here, we created videos for both the making of Hong Kong and the process of science. In total, we created 26 videos for the making of Hong Kong, but only 11 for the process of science. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why is there such a big discrepancy between the number of videos for each course? And that basically comes down to the content of each course. The making of Hong Kong is more of a, an academically driven course. So it has a lot of content. Um, so a lot of content is introduced in the lectures and developed further in the tutorials of the course. The process of science is more practical. So they will go through some theories in the classroom, but then they will also bring the students on field trips, conduct experiments, uh, so the level of input that was needed from us was considerably less. So from there, we come to the pilot analysis. Um, as Mark said previously, the uh, first piloting was done last year from September to December 2019, term one of the academic year. And from that, we were able to get some qualitative data as well as quantitative data. We'll have a look first at some of the quantitative data. Now, the questionnaires that were given out or distributed to students at the end of the courses were about 20 questions in total. 
A lot of these questions were related to very specific details of the videos that were developed. Um, for this, we're just going to look at some of the more general questions that deal with student satisfaction and maybe what they got from the course, what they liked about the courses. So the first one we have here is, the mini lectures helped me to understand key information in order to help me make progress in my learning. Now, the making of Hong Kong is the upper graph here, whereas the process of science is the lower graph. You can see that there is some differences in the graphs, and these mainly stem from the fact that the making of Hong Kong rarely got any answers on the scale from 0 to 10 that were below 4, whereas with the process of science, there were a few that did get lower. In general, if we look at it, we can see that most students were satisfied with the progress that they made in their learning. With the making of Hong Kong, the majority of the students chose a range from 6 to 10 with their responses. With the, making of, uh, sorry, with the process of science, it generally started with 5 and went up to 10, with the majority of students choosing 5, 6, 7, and 8. The next one, the mini lectures were appropriate for my learning needs. Um, this is something that we asked them because we wanted to make sure that the content of the lecture was suitable for what they thought they needed. And again, we can see that we have a similar range of responses in both courses. Again, the making of Hong Kong, the majority of students chose between 6 to 8. And again, with the process of science, it was in the range of 5 to 8 where the majority of students were satisfied. The next one was, I learned to apply the learning strategies using the mini lectures in my course. Um, there's a bigger discrepancy with this one in that the making of Hong Kong, again, chose 6, 7, 8. Um, but the process of science was a little bit lower. Now, I would hypothesize that the reason for this is due to the practical nature of the process of science. With the making of Hong Kong, we were able to integrate um, some more language learning theory into it and give them more practice with it. So we were able to look at some uh, academic writing, uh, research, presenting skills, uh, things that would help them in a, in a more academic setting. But this is something that we were not able to do with the practical theory of the process of science. The next one then is that the mini lectures that they studied or practiced were valuable to the learning process. Again, we have a similar range as they go from 6 to 8 in the making of Hong Kong. And again, we can see that this time we do have a larger number of students choosing between 6 to 8 in the process of science. Now, with this, from this pilot analysis, I think we can see that in the main, the majority of students were quite happy, they were satisfied with the content of the videos and with what the videos dealt with. And to investigate this a little bit more, we contacted students and we conducted face-to-face -face interviews with them. Now, because of the political situation in Hong Kong last year where we had the protests, and this term because of the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of these interviews had to be conducted over Zoom rather than meeting them face to face. But over the course of these interviews, we did notice that there were some common responses of, given by the students. And I'm just going to look at a few of these right now. So one of the ones that we got from the making of Hong Kong from Nicole and was that she found that the videos did help with her vocabulary because she found that a lot of the, that a lot of the vocabulary that she came up came in contact with on the course was new to her uh, that she had never seen it before and this was one of the main goals for these videos we wanted to bridge that gap between the knowledge that the students had and what they were going to learn in the course so when we get a comment like this from a student i think 
it helps us feel that we are doing something right. Some more comments that we got. Um, these are quite related. We had one from Hazel in the process of science and also from Inna in the process of science. And this refers to the ability for, of the students to use these videos when it comes to reviewing material that they've already done in the course. And also, you know, again, with homework. If they're doing some homework, writing a paper, and they are a little bit confused or worried about the theory or the material that they're reading about or writing about, they found that it was useful to go back to the videos, re-watch them, and that would, they would come away with a greater idea or greater clarity when it comes to the theory or material involved. Uh, another comment that Inna had, and this was also somewhat related to a comment made by Nicole in the making of Hong Kong, was that in the videos, the material was able to be displayed or uh, shown in a way that was a little bit more dramatic, uh, maybe a little bit more eye-catching than something that the professor or lecturer could do in the lecture hall. And they found that these dramatic scenes um, stimulated them in a way. So if they were feeling somewhat sleepy or disinclined to study, watching the videos helped to motivate them in a way. If we do some recordings, it's very effective for me to do some revision. It's very important because in class, there are some things may distract us from some other interesting things. We cannot pay attention to them. So as for this mini course, it's very important because although you don't have time to check, but if you maybe maybe just 10 minutes to 20 minutes, you just sleep in your bed and you just like watch a video to watch this kind of mini lecture, I think it's very good. And Lewis as well agreed that, you know, these mini lectures were a good way of reviewing. You know, even if you're at home, uh, you're relaxing. As he said, even if you're just on the bed, you can take out your phone, take out your tablet, watch one of these mini lectures and learn in the comfort of your own home. Okay, so... Thank you very much for watching our presentation today. Uh, I hope you gained something from it. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us. Our contact information is right here. Again, thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy.